What's good with you all today? My name is RayGVT and I've got another deck profile for you guys today. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys my version of the Water Exceeds Baryon deck featuring monsters used by Reginald Castle aka Shark from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexo anime. Last time we took a look at some of the power that this deck received with the new Armored Exceeds cards from Age of Overlord. But today I wanted to show you guys the Baryon side of this deck, take you guys through some of the cards that I'm running as well as give you guys some options for some alternative cards that you could run. Now once again I I feel like I should put this disclaimer out first and say that this deck is nothing meta or anything serious, not even close. You would do a lot better with the Armored Xyz version of this deck, but I'm making this version of the deck just to show what it was capable of. I did make a profile for that too, so do check that out. Don't expect anything super crazy from this, the only reason that I'm showcasing this again is because I've legitimately been having a lot of fun playing these lower tier decks lately just for fun. I haven't been playing in as many tournaments as I have been for months just because things have gotten so much busier and when I sit down and play this game whether by myself with Master Duel or at locals with other people I just kind of want to have some fun and not take things too seriously at least for now so enjoy these kind of more fun deck profiles that I'll be bringing at least until things kind of pick up a little bit more so yeah once again nothing super serious or anything super crazy now with all that said let's get right into the deck profile now I'm not gonna lie to you guys this deck runs a lot of the same things that you would have seen earlier in the army Xyz build of this deck, minus a few changes here and there. As a result, this one will be a quick one because I'm going to focus more on the different spells and traps and extra deck stuff that we'll get into later. Let's begin. So to start, again, we run three copies of Abyss Shark, great for whenever we have other water monsters on the field, three copies of Dream Shark, and three Buzzsaw Sharks. Once again, these three boys are our key players in this deck because they can be summoned off of each other and just allow you to extend a lot. We keep them at three each because we want to be seeing them to make our plays. For some of the two offs, I play two Double Fin Sharks again, two Crystal Sharks, and two Lantern Sharks. If this card is used for the Xyz summon of a water monster, it can be treated as a level 3 or 5 monster. This card works amazing in tandem with our 3 main shark boys by letting you summon any of your sharks giving you an extra body on deck and its level manipulation effect is also very nice for our Xyz monster climbs. Then up next is 3 copies of Silent Angler and 2 copies of Silent Sea Nettle. I bumped up the number of anglers in this build just because it's a very convenient card for whenever we want that extra material on the field and same for Sea Nettle here too. I wanted to run 3 in the Armored Xyz build but I was wrestling with space a little more in that just because the objective was more specific for that deck. I've been finding that it's been working way better in here just because though we do some Xyz climbing in here, it's really more about bringing out a variety of different monsters depending on the situation that you're in. And once again, I run two Minarukas and one Botanical Princess. I also do run just the one right hand shark in here, no left hand this time, so we're just keeping with the one with the right hand shark. For hand traps, I play two Ash Blossom and one Ghost Bell just to try something a little different. And that's it for the monsters. Now onto the spells and traps. Now this time around, our selection of spells and traps is looking very different to fit more in line with the whole Baryon Emperor theme that I'm going for here. So to begin, I have two copies of Baryon Untopia, which is our field spell of the deck. This card is always treated as a Baryon card. Number monsters that you control with the number between 101 and 107 in their name, as well as CXC's monsters and number C monsters that you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects and your opponent's cannot target them with card effects. Once per turn, if you special summon an Xyz monster with the rank up magic spells effect, you can target that Xyz monster and one monster and one monster that your opponent controls and attach that monster to that Xyz monster as material. This field spell is very nice to have for the archetype, giving us some protection. It also gives us some more incentive to use our rank up spells whenever we get the chance to. I did run three of these before, but I scaled down to two just because it is searchable off of some of the other cards effects. Next is two copies of 7th Ascension. This is our searcher card of the deck, which lets us add a Baryon's rank up or 7th spell or trap to our hand from our deck, or place it on top of the deck. If your opponent controls a monster special summon from the extra deck, you can banish this card from your grave and send one rank up spell from your hand to the grave. This card's effect then becomes that spell's effect when this card is activated. This is once per turn. I have this primarily just for the search effect, but the second effect does come up sometimes too because our rank up cards do play a role too. 
The next is three copies of the seventh force. During the battle phase, if a monster is destroyed by a battle or card effect, target one number exceeds monster in your grave and special summon from your extra deck one number C monster with the same type but one rank higher. And if you do, attach that monster to it as material. And then, if you special summon a number C monster with a number between 101 and 107 in its name, you can add one seventh or barrier spell or trap or one rank up quick play spell except another seventh force from your deck to your hand. Okay, so this effect is a little convoluted, but essentially to break it down, it functions as another rank up spell with some extra effects. It's a little specific with the whole if you summon a number C monster with a number between 101 and 107 in its name thing, but doing so allows us to search our rank up spells. But also, considering that we do play Xyz monsters with numbers between 101 and 107, we're pretty good here. I think running 3 is okay, the rank up effect is very important for climbing if we have no other ways present. And speaking of our rank up cards too, I run one of each rank up magic quick chaos and one rank up magic 7th force. These function as our level up cards essentially to climb our Xyz ranks. And lastly for the spells, I keep the three white mirrors in here just for consistency. For traps, I only run like one or two really and that's the seventh eternity. Probably the most useful and may as well be the only usable trap card in this archetype. It's a continuous trap that lets you target one number Xyz monster that you control that has a number between 101 and 107 in its name or one Xyz monster that you control that has any such monsters as material, then activate one of these effects. First, negate the attacks of one monster your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to the targeted monster's attack until the end of this turn. And second, detach all material from the targeted monster, then you can special summon a number Xyz monster from your grave. This is all once per turn too. Seventh Eternity is a good card for the archetype. I play one because I really don't see the need of playing more than one. Now, there are two other seventh traps that you can play, which are both Rebirth of the Seventh Emperors and Reincarnation of the Seventh Emperors, which I will go over a little bit later, but in my genuine opinion, I think that these cards are genuinely bad and shouldn't be ran. However, they are options that I will cover in just a little while, and I'll explain why as well too. They have great end goals, but you have to get over the runaround effect that they both have to reach it. I say that if you do decide to run one of these, play them at one each. But again, I'll go over those in just a little bit. I see these cards very similar to how I see the Cypher Traps as well, in that they're good, but not great, and not the most needed cards. Again, see how you go if you do decide to play these. And one more trap in here, which is Xyz Revive Splash. This is one of the better water traps that I've found that definitely caters to this deck well. You can target one rank 4 or lower Xyz monster in your grave and special summon it. Then you can banish this card from your grave and then target one water Xyz monster that you control, special summon from your extra deck one water Xyz monster that is one rank higher than that monster that you control by using it as material. This is treated as an Xyz summon and transfer its materials to the summoned monster. This is once per turn, of course. So it gives you an extra Xyz body on deck while also allowing you to do an instant Xyz summon using another Xyz that you already control. Pretty helpful. And that's it for the spells and traps. Now, let's move on to our boss monsters in our extra deck. Now this time around, our extra deck is going to be looking quite different. Because we're not focusing on the heavy armor Xyz strategy with equipping and powering up to the max, we've got a different selection of boss monsters in here. We will be doing a little of that armor XC strat in here, but not to the heavy extent as the full power version that we introduced before. So with that, let's get to it. So up first is number 32, Shark Drake. When this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, you can detach one material from this card and special summon the destroyed monster to your opponent's field and face up attack position, but it loses 1000 attack. If you do summon this way, it can make a second attack during the battle phase. This card is pretty awesome. Essentially, it brings back your opponent's monster after destruction to beat it down again, boosting itself in the progress. It essentially gets a moxie boost and it's very fitting to the character that plays this deck in the actual anime. Then, coming up from that, we have Chaos number 32, Shark Drake Vice. This card can be summoned using our Shark Drake and its materials transfer over 2. 
If your life points are 1000 or less, you can banish one monster from your grave and detach one material from this card, then target one face up monster on the field, its attack becomes zero until the end of the turn. This is all activated as a quick effect. It does seem a bit situational, but I still find use for this card to be able to rank up from if I don't really need it to stay on the field. Next shark up is number 37 Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark. When any player's monsters declare an attack, you can detach one Exceeds material from this card. All monsters your opponent currently controls lose 1000 attack until the end of this turn. When this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can target one other monster in your grave and special summon it. This is a once per turn effect. This is one of my personal favorite monsters in this deck. The debuff effect is really nice when you're in a spot and its second effect is really nice because it just floats into another monster in your grave. No specific monster, so you get to choose any. This is good for recycling back some of our smaller main deck sharks or if you have some Xyz monsters in your grave, you can allow one of those to swing back onto the field. Alright, the next set of cards are the ones that we need to give a little bit of attention to because these are responsible for not only Xyz climbing into our bigger guys, but the effects are very, very useful depending on what situation that we're in. First up, we have number 103, Ragna Zero. This is a card that lets us detach one Xyz material from this card once per turn to then target one face-up attack position monster that our opponent controls whose current attack is different from its original attack and destroy it. And if you do, you get to draw one card. This is useful for a number of reasons. In today's game of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's more than likely that we won't be facing a monster with its base attack, so if the attack has been changed at all, we get to just destroy our opponent's monster. And the free draw, always nice. Up from that is Chaos number 103, Ragnafinity. Similar effect here, by detaching one material, we target one of our opponent's monsters and inflict damage to our opponent equal to the difference between the monster's original attack and current attack. And if you do, you banish it. When it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard while it has Xyz material, you can special summon this card from your grave. To resolve this, you need to have the original 103 Ragnar Zero in your grave. There's definitely easy ways to make sure that that happens. Obviously, what we'll be doing is detaching Ragnar Zero to activate this effect, putting it in our grave, and then carrying on with the rest of it. This pair of cards right here has been so helpful in so many situations, especially when I'm staring down a massive attack monster on my opponent's side that's already been boosted. Very useful. Next up are our important cards because these are our big boss monsters next to our sharks from before. So first up, we have Nash Knight. This is our stepping stone to easily getting to our CXC's Nash Knight. This monster can't be destroyed by battle while a number monster is present on the field. During the main phase, you can detach two materials from this card and attach one number Xyz monster from your extra deck to this card as a material that has a number between 101 and 107 in its name. Then, after, you can detach one other face-up monster on the field to this card as material. This is all activated as a quick effect, and this is once per turn. This is great for getting rid of problem monsters on our opponent's side and using them to dive deeper into this deck's epic bosses because up next, we have Chaos Xyz Nash Knight, which I play as two copies. Right next to Silent on a Dark, which we'll get to in just a sec, this is our big boss of the deck. You can special summon this by using Nash Knight and transfer its materials over to this card, and it can be destroyed by card effects as well. You can detach material from this card and special summon a number Xyz monster from your extra deck with a number between 101 and 107 in its name using this card as material, but it gets destroyed during your opponent's next phase. Now, of course, there's easy workarounds to this last part. You can just rank up very easily into the next monster to completely bypass the destruction effect. This is all treated as an Xyz summon and the materials on this gets transferred to the next card that you climb into. This card is responsible for keeping a lot of control going on our side and it essentially lets you step into any of the other number bosses that we have in here that are between 103 and 107, some which we'll highlight right now. Coming in is number 101 Silent Honor Arc. Similar to Nash Knight before, this is our stepping stone to our big boss Silent Honor Dark and getting off its effect. 
You can detach two materials from this card, then target one special summon monster your opponent controls in attack position and attach it to this card as material. Boy, we stay thieving on our opponent's monsters out here. If this face-up card on the field would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach a material instead. So this card can usually stick around for a bit and just act as a wall because once you suck up your opponent's monsters and it eventually ends up in the grave, you give way to the next boss's full effect with Chaos number 101, Silent Honor Dark. Once per turn, you can target a special summon monster that your opponent controls and attach it to this card as material. When this card is destroyed and sent to the grave while it has material, you can special summon this card from your grave. Then, gain life points equal to the original attack of this card. Silent Honor Arc must be in your grave to activate and to resolve this effect. However, if this card is special summoned this way, it can attack for the rest of the turn. Next to Chaos XC's Nash Knight, this is a card that will be needed in order to fulfill the effects of some of the other boss monsters that we have in here. Alright, and then coming in next, I do run both number 73 Abyss Splash and Chaos number 73 Abyss Super Splash. Abyss Splash serves as just a big boy that helps us during battle by doubling its attack by detaching one material. However, the battle damage inflicted to our opponent is halved. It never sticks around for too long though because the first chance we get, we go into Super Splash where the real effect is. Super Splash boosts a monster that's battling equal to the attack of our opponent's monster's attack but only during that damage calculation only. And if this card has the original Abyss Splash attached to it, then it gains the effect of not being able to be destroyed by card effects. These both serve as just big bodies for our damage. They have some pretty good attack too, so we always have to put that to good use. Okay, and coming in now is what I consider to be the main big boss of this whole deck. Chaos Xyz Baryon Hope. This card can also be XC summoned by using one monster you control with number C101 through to C107 in its name as the Xyz material. This card gains 1000 attack for each material attached to it as well. You can target one number monster in your grave and until our opponent's next end phase, this card's name becomes that monster and replaces this effect with that monster's original effects. This is once per turn, of course. So this card can essentially mirror and copy the effect of any number monster in our grave, making it extremely useful, especially if you have a lot of your numbers that have ended up in the grave in the climb up to getting to him. When used correctly, this card can single-handedly be our game winner. But it's important that you target correctly according to your situation. Make sure you read the situation that you're in first, then base off that that what you do next with it. It's a very useful card for this deck and is our big boss outside of the Armor XC strategy. And then lastly, I have one Abyss Dweller and one number 71 Rebarian Shark. And that's gonna do it for my Baryon XC's deck profile. Now, some things to stress again is that this deck was created with more fun in mind than actual competitiveness. That's for the full Armored XC's build that we did earlier. This is more just casual fun as I was playing this against a few friends and just wanted to showcase what I've got with this being the other side and the original version of the Armored XC's deck that we have now with all the new tools that we've received recently. Keep all of this in mind when you're building your own version. You can absolutely add a ton of disruption and removal tools to really make this deck pop out more when you're playing with it. And before I go, I of course do want to give you guys some alternative options for some cards that can absolutely fit in this deck. Monster wise, there's not too much that I would recommend outside of the cards that we already run in the main deck of both this version and the Armored Xyz version of the deck. However, when I was testing a while back, I did find some use in the card Ice Knight. I don't have my physical copy on me at the moment, but I'll put it up for you guys to see. It's a level four aqua monster that gains 400 attack for each aqua monster you control. It also gives you an additional normal summon in addition to your normal summon or set during your turn, but it has to be a water monster. However, it does lock you into only being able to normal or special summon water monsters for the rest of the turn, which ain't no problem. It's fairly decent for what it lets you do, and I would recommend it at probably two or three copies. It definitely comes in handy. Now, for the spells and traps, this is where things open up a little bit more. There are a few in archetype spells and traps that you could consider running, and these are spells and traps that I had in the earlier builds of this deck. First up is Baryon's Chaos Draw. Now, this card. Initially, I had this card at 3 in the deck because you have to draw it in order to make use of it in 
any way. So you have to draw it during your draw phase, reveal it, and keep it revealed until your main phase one. Then during that main phase, you can activate one of the following effects. Effect number one, send one seventh normal spell from your deck to the grave. This effect then becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated, similar to what we kind of saw earlier with 7th Ascension. So it essentially mirrors and copies any one seventh spell's effect. And then, effect number two, special summon up to two monsters from your deck, but negate their effects. Then, immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz summon one number monster using materials that you control, including both those monsters. So essentially, it gives you an instant Xyz opportunity, which definitely comes in handy. The two effects are good, however, the reason why I just refused to play it after a while was because it's just so situational. It's a great spell card that really does help, but you cannot do anything with it unless you draw into it. And that's what killed it for me, because I just found that I was never drawing into this card, even when I had it at 3. The very few times that I did draw into it, it absolutely did come through for me. Now this is just my personal experience with this card, so if you want to run it, I do recommend doing so. I just couldn't do it. For traps now, we have both Reincarnation of the Seventh Emperors and Rebirth of the Seventh Emperors. Reincarnation lets you banish one of your number Xyz monsters with the number between 101 and 107 during damage calculation, including its materials, and then during the end phase of the turn that you activated this card, special summon one rank 3 or lower Xyz monster from your extra deck, except a number monster. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. And Rebirth lets you tribute all Xyz monsters that you control, then target one of your banished Xyz monsters, special summon it, then attach your number Xyz monsters that are banished or in your grave to it as material that have a number between 101 and 107 in their name, up to the number of monsters tributed to activate this effect plus one. During the end phase of the turn that you activated this card, each player takes 300 damage for each card in their hand. Okay, so I have some words for these cards. They're okay for what they do, but you can get cards that do so much better as a substitute, which is why I've opted to just remove them from the final build. They're just unnecessarily complicated and slow, but I do get it. They needed to put something in archetype that can do something to help you exceed at every turn. I just don't think that this is the right answer. I mentioned it briefly earlier, but these cards give me the same vibe as the Cypher Trap cards. If you're gonna play them, play them at one copy each, no more. But I do vouch for the Cypher Traps just a little bit more because they are a little bit more useful in their own archetype and for their end goal and what they do. Moving on, you could opt for Gozen Match again and there's also a number of other generic water spells and traps that really help you a lot for water decks just like this. Now for extra deck, you have cards like F-Zero Utopic Future and Draco Future that can come in handy as well as use. You also do have access to Stealth, Crag, and Spawn in this version of the deck. Once per turn, during the main phase, quick effect, you can destroy one water monster that your opponent controls. If this card special summoned by the effect of a number of Xyz monsters is destroyed, you can special summon other Stealth, Crag, and monsters from your grave up to the number of materials that this card had. Then you can attach up to one monster from your grave to each of those special summon monsters as material. I recommend this card at 2 if you do decide to play it. Alright, and that's gonna do it for the deck profile. There's lots that you can do with this deck, but my build is definitely catered more to the casual anime type of build. I wanted to really get the feel of being a Baryan Emperor, and I've had fun playing this deck. But you do have plenty of options for ratios and cards that you can move around to make way for some more disruption and things like that in this deck. I hope you guys try some things out if you do decide to build it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Also, just super quick before I go, I wanted to mention that this deck profile, as well as all my other previous deck profiles, will be available on my Wygo Pro deck page. I'll link it below in the description so you can check it out if you like. I'll have all my other deck profiles on the site to view, and we'll be updating it as I go. Anyways, you guys take care, and I'll see you guys again soon in the Duel Arena.